Yes, yeah, so I can remember, you know, getting ready for Amir, and uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, talking trash. Anytime there was, it's funny because anytime there was a promotion where there was good trash talking, I was always uh, more amped for the fight. You know, I don't know, I, I, I it's something that would, would, you know, it would make me look forward to training, especially as you get older in your career. You know, you want to, you, you get like tired of training, and you know, you'd find, you got to find new motivation to, to start training and whatnot. And you know, you still love the sport. I think you always love the sport, but you uh, you're looking for excuses to just train harder or find that motivation. And whenever I had a a um, an opponent that would talk trash or or got under my skin, or maybe I could get under their skin, and then they get under my skin, whatever the combination of things was, as long as it generated some kind of reaction. It made me look forward to training every day. So I can remember, like, you know, dealing with the the con promotion, and there was a lot of trash talk. Uh, you know, it had started a couple months earlier when we, when we uh, uh, had the announcement, the announcement of the fight. Uh, we had two press conferences, one in New York and one in um, one in London. And then from there, it just you know it was going back and forth, even on the internet. So. No, that's kind of was kind of the buildup, and and we got if everybody remembers we got into a brawl at the at the weigh-in. Me and Khan got into a brawl at the weigh-in, and that kind of set the stage, and and, and that I think that really also uh, it made people look more forward to the fight. Um, you know, speaking of the weigh-in, it was my last fight at 140 pounds. It was not a, 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 the easiest time to make weight. I don't I don't. While the weight definitely affected me, I don't think I would have beat Amira even on my best day. I think stylistically it was just the wrong kind of fight for me. Um, it, it, and and it was a stylistic nightmare for me. You know, it, it was longer, faster. Uh, never fought somebody faster in my career, uh, uh, faster than me in my career except for Amir Khan. And uh, it, it showed and it was uh, it was problematic because I, I, I even in fights where I was a little bit outgunned, I could at least always, uh, always fall back on my speed and, you know, make the fight somewhat competitive or or at least, uh, you know, have have something to make my opponent worry about, you know. And, and in this fight, I didn't have that. And plus, he was longer than me. So when you're rangy and faster, it's a real problem, especially when you're fighting a guy who relies on speed himself. So that was the context. A lot of trash talking. We were ready to go in round one. Please obey my commands. Respect the bell. And above all, protect yourself at all times. Trunks are good. Touch him up. I had the better hair, no? I mean, come on. I had the spiky, the, the you know, everybody knows that. about what it, Everybody now knows it as the, the Paulie D hair. But I, I had had the hairstyle like that since around 02. I had sometimes changed it and gone back to it. I went back to this. I think this was the last time I went back to this hairstyle for the con fight because I had gone away from it for a little while. It, it had kind of, it wasn't like, it wasn't the most popular Northeastern haircut anymore. While when I first started using it in the early 2000s, it was. It, like, everybody in the Northeast had this haircut. But uh, by the 2010, it had kind of faded. It was mostly just uh, the Paulie D hair because he had had the image from the reality show uh, Jersey Shore. Uh, other than that, um, not too many people had it anymore. But I said, you know what? I liked the way I looked in this, in the, when I had this hairstyle. Let me bring it back. So I brought it back one last time. So starting out, I felt like it was one nothing me based on the hair, you know. But then the fight started. Touch. Those long arms of Khan. Khan lands a nice. Khan lands a nice short right hand on the inside. He's landed it a couple times so far this round. Good left hand by Khan. And you can see there, I'm, I'm trying to set traps. Like, I'm, I'm trying to touch him and step back and walk him into something. But he's just rangy and he's fast. He's long. So even the traps I'm setting, they're, they're just not working the way I wanted them to work. You know, like, he was, he was, a lot of times he was even reacting the way I wanted him to react. But it was just too fast. You know, it's like, and he's, he's rangy. So when he not only is reacting faster, but then he's going to, it's going to land quicker. And, and before I can anticipate it a lot of times because it was, he, I didn't anticipate him being able to reach me at some, at some at some length at some distances, and so you know while early on I, ha I had the energy, I was starting to realize, man, I, I've got to really try to push this issue. I've got to try to push him here because I, I boxing him is going to be very difficult. He's he's fast and he's rangy and, it, and it's a it's a stylistic problem for me. Right hand by Tom. Combination there. 
You see right there, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to touch him. A lot of, you know, a lot of times, uh, uh, for, just to give you a little bit of boxing background, you know, you shoot a hard jab, you know, looking to land it. Sometimes you shoot these touch jabs, these, uh, these soft jabs. You're looking for the opponent to come over the top of it. You're actually looking for him to counter that, and you're looking to counter his counter, you know? So that's what, a lot of times when I, when I was using these touch jabs, I was looking for Amir's reaction so I could walk him into something. And if you just saw right there, he was able to react over the top of my soft jab. And I was looking to set a trap for him and, and hit him, but he, he came over the top of it, landed the punches, I got off the right hand, I kind of landed it there, but you guys, you can see, I'm not supposed to get hit there, I'm supposed to just, you know, kind of touch him, step back, and, and counter him, which I did, but in between, he was still able to get those two shots off, and then again, that was a testament to the length of his arms, and the speed he had, and also the good legs, because he was young at that time, very good legs, he was able to close that gap really fast, so again, even the 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 mechanism that I typically use to, to, to give you trouble was... Working, it was like a, it was like kryptonite. It was it wasn't working here, not the way I wanted it to anyway. Khan, Khan is fighting not only a good fight but a smart fight. Malinaji, because of the forget about his smaller size for a second, because he keeps his hands low, is much easier for Khan to hit with that straight jab. Max made a good point there. You know, you, you, you when you're putting your hands low, usually you, you have the speed advantage. You can afford to do that. And I, my whole career, I always had the speed advantage. So I kind of just, it was just a, a natural part of me to have my guard a little bit low, rely more on my eyesight and, uh, I, you know, rely on my reactions. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I've not been that fundamentally sound my whole career. And I didn't expect this guy to be this fast. And suddenly the lack of fundamentals, which is a lack of having the hands up, against the guy who for the first time in my career I'm seeing is faster than me, you know, it, it was a problem because now he's hitting me with stupid stuff that I usually would be slipping and sliding away from against a regular opponent. And again, I can't uh, put more of an emphatic statement. Uh, I can't more emphatically describe the length and length of his arms and the speed. It was just, it, it, it made me pay consistently. Now with my hands not in a great position, not being up, it, they, he was hitting me even with, with shots that, you know, were surprising me. Shots that maybe at times he was out of range, and I thought he was out of range, but then he'd step quickly in range with those fast legs that he had. It was a problem. Malinaji able to connect there. Khan shoots a right hand over the top. Malinaji's point that a lot of coddled European fighters fail once they leave. So I'm going to make a point here. Uh, it's funny because in this fight, and it happened to me in two fights. I don't know. It's like I have a, like a... Some issues in my neck with my with some a nerve in my neck. I had a, a issues when um I caught an injury one time sparring years ago. And it happened to me in the hand fight. And it happened to me in this fight where the opponent is leaning on your head enough times on the inside, so much. And it happened to me only in these two fights. Um, uh, I guess I probably got leaned on a little bit more in these two fights. Um, that my neck was just cramped up and it kind of just died. I couldn't even hold my head my head up. So as this fight was wearing on, my head felt heavier and heavier, and my neck couldn't even hold. My head up. It was like you, you'll start to notice. It's a weird thing. It, it's like I don't even know if I'm if I'm dis, if I'm doing it any justice in the way I'm describing it. But you're gonna notice like my head kind of looks like it's kind of hanging off my shoulders a little bit. Uh, even the way I whiplash when I take a shot, it, it's it's a little it's a lot harder. Like it, it's whiplashing a lot harder because I'm not able to withstand the impact of a punch anymore uh, because my neck is not taking not 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 absorbing the the blow the way the way it should. So watch my head here. I think you. I just started to notice like my head kind of hanging off in the. In the wrong direction a little bit uh right just before this I, I think around this part of the fight you're gonna start noticing this and let's let's see right with this jab first of all europe and are tested Break, don't touch, don't touch. so far has not stop, borne stop, out stop. tonight That's a way to get out. and it really fits in with khan's temperament i know he's got a lot of oh i mean publicity around him in england everything but he's pretty reserved when you talk with him and he's pretty businesslike and he's pretty serious. And he See here, I mean, it was smart too, because at this point, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, beaten mentally here. Uh, I don't have like, there's not a lot I have left to give in the fight. And, and Amir is kind of seeing this. He's, he's bossing it with the, with the jab. And again, the speed advantage that he had, I had always, you know, prided myself on dominating opponents with the jab, or at least always uh, befuddling them and, and giving them problems with the jab. And, and at this point, it was like I, I wasn't able to get it off the right way. I was I was fading, and Amir had a great jab. Uh, and again, length of his arms, great jab, a lot of speed. And now you've got a tired opponent in front of you, and he was taking advantage with these sharp, sharp jabs. And of course, like I said, my neck was not exactly helping me out every time I took these jabs. That way. 
when Malinaji is up on his toes, he's harder to hit. Um, he really doesn't have much head movement, as you see there. When he's stationary, he has a little upper body movement. He has one pet move where he ducks down to his right, but otherwise has never really avoided punches with head movement. He avoids it with his feet. Because he's not going to quit. No. I mean, and I think the corner is not looking at this realistically. Like he's got a chance to win this fight somehow. They're asking. And I think he's referring to in the corner, the doctor had tried to stop the fight between the 10th and 11th. And I told the doctor, I said, uh, you know, give me, give me another round. Just let me show you I, I, I'm still fighting, you know. Uh, don't, don't, no, no, don't stop it here. You know, I, I'm, I'm still good to continue. So I convinced the doctor, I think it was Dr. Carreri. Um, uh, he was, a, you know, a known New York State athletic physician doctor, good doctor. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he let me continue. I, maybe it was also because he knew me. So he's like, fine, you know, I was pleading with him. And... Uh, let me continue. So I was trying to, you know, I had to go out there with, with having to prove to him that I need, I could continue to that between 11 and 12. He doesn't try to stop the fight again. But as you guys know, uh, it didn't go that long. Do something he's not, he doesn't do. Knock somebody out. Left hand thumps off the head of Malinaz. Khan, Khan's knockout shots look more convincing. Good, good, Steve good Smoger stoppage Johnson. by Steve Smoger. Well done. And that was it. I was spent at that point. You know, uh, I, I think Steve Smoger, you know, I can't, can't, uh, can't discredit the stoppage. Uh, I, I would want to continue, you know, at the beginning of the round. But at that point, you can kind of see my face. Like, you know, I, I don't really have a leg to stand on. I don't really have an argument as far as stopping the fight. Uh, so, you know, Steve made a good stoppage and uh, and that was it, you know, a uh, good win from here. I remember it was his first, it was his entrance into the U U.S. market. Uh, I think it was his first fight in the United States. Uh, he came in as a world champion. He had won the fight. Uh, he had won, um, he had beaten Andreas Kotelnik the year prior to, and, and won the title. Then he beat my, my fellow Brooklynite, Dimitri Salida, in England uh, in his first defense. And this was his second defense was uh, against another Brooklynite, well, against myself. But he, we had this fight in the theater in Madison Square Garden. So... You know, uh, a tough night's work for me. I remember I had a lot of rebuilding to do after this. Uh, I remember uh, a lot of people just writing me off and a lot of people thinking that that was the end of my career. You know, I had my little run and it was and, and this was a bad defeat and it, it was going to be tough to overcome this. But uh, I, I, I've been proving people wrong my whole life. I was able to prove people wrong again. And two years later, uh, I became a world champion again in, in the welterweight division in my next weight class. This was the final fight I had in the super lightweight division. And that's kind of, that's the round, that's the, you know, the roundup, uh, the, uh, the uh, explanation of, uh, of my, my defeat to Amir Khan. It seems to get a lot of views. These highlights seem to get a lot of views. And that's why I wanted to uh, kind of make a video about it. it it's, I suppose these pilots are very popular for some reason or another. Maybe, maybe it's because of the brawl video at the weigh-in. You know, I'm, I'm sure most of the people that saw these, watched these highlights, probably watched the brawl video at the weigh-in. Uh, me and Amir uh, have a good relationship now. We're cool. We've, we've even commentated some fights together in England. So it's been cool. And... Um, uh, you know, uh, I always wish him the best uh, on, on his endeavors, and uh, he's still fighting. Obviously, he's younger than me, <laughs> so my age doesn't allow that anymore, man. But that's the that's the that's the long and short of it for Amir Khan versus Paulie Malinaji in May of 2010. <laughs>